In certain situations, you may run into a scenario where your firewall will have a corrupted firmware. So in this case, as you see, my firewall is no longer booting and I intentionally broke it so I can show you the scenario and it shows here no default firmware or a similar message that indicates the firewall is no longer able to boot into a valid firmware and that you are pretty much in a dead end. In this video, I want to show you how to fix this issue from the boot menu using TFTP protocol. So TFTP is very similar to FTP, it's just a file transfer protocol. It's very legacy, but it's the supported protocol that you can use to restore your firmware into your firewall from the boot menu. As you see right now, the firewall is going into a boot loop. Every 60 seconds, it's just going to reboot itself. We're also going to need to download the firmware image to restore to our device. Since our device right now has a broken firmware, we do this by logging into the support.fortinate.com website. From the download menu, we choose firmware images, and then we choose the download tab for the 40K product. Now you choose which product version you want to download. In this case, I want to download the latest version. So let me go to the 6.0 branch. And inside I have 6.0, 6.2, 6.4. So let's go into 6.4 and the latest version we have, which was released on June 4, a few weeks back. So we can download 6.4.1. And here you will see all the model numbers and each one has a specific firmware file in .out format. So in here you will see things like 1000D, 100E, different model numbers. I want to look for the one I'm using, which is 61E. So I'm just search for 61E. Be careful sometimes, like in this case, in the 60E version, you have a normal one and the POE version, which is the power over ethernet. So make sure you choose the one that you are actually using because they are not cross compatible. Also, they have one for DSL, DSLJ. So they might have variety. You have to choose the specific one for your version. I know this is mine, so I'm going to download this out file and now I have the firmware version that I can use to restore my firewall to a working condition. Now the next step for us after we downloaded the firmware file is to install the TFTP software. There's a very famous program for this it's called TFTP D64 and it's a free software that has been around for a long time. So let's try to install this TFTP D64 software. I'm going to agree to the terms of service. And then I will choose the default option. Also want to start the TFTB program. Now once you come to this step, be very careful. This is, is going to open the Windows firewall, which is very important piece of the software that has to be opened. In this case, I'm using my own personal computer. So it's allow me to simply allow this access, which opens the Windows firewall. If you are in a corporate network or on a work network, you most likely will not have enough privilege to open this access yourself you might need to contact your end user services department or whoever is responsible for doing that kind of stuff because it requires admin privilege i searched in the start menu for windows defender firewall with advanced security this is the program that is responsible for opening firewall rules on your windows environment so if we check the inbound rules this is where we're going to set up our tftb server we can allow the firewall to grab the firmware file we just downloaded from the support.fortinet website. We check the inbound rules and in here we will see all kind of programs I installed in my PC like uh, Turin, DaVinci Resolve, Venus 3 server and different kind of programs all over the place. If we see in here the TFTB server this is the rule that the program just asked me to open in the firewall. So if we double click this TFTP server we will see that the program allowed itself to be accessed on the network. And you can see in here, program files, TFTB64. So this is the program allowing itself to work over the network. But in a corporate network or in a work network, this rule will not simply be added unless you have admin rights on your desktop. In this case, all you need is to reach out to your support department and just ask them to do this simple rule. By going into inbound rules, we can click new rule and in here we're going to set up a rule manually and you can either set it up by program and choose the tftb program that we downloaded in the c program files folder or you can also do it simply by going into board 
and click next. And this we use port UDB 69. This is the board that is used for this connection. So you simply need to open UDB 69 and you just click next. Allow this connection. You can allow it from all scopes and then you just call it TFTP for firewall fix. This way you can allow this rule manually if you are working in a corporate network. But in this case, since I'm using my BC, it got added normally. I just wanted to let you know how to fix it in case you need it. Now the TFTP D64 program has a very simple layout. It just asks you which folder you want to point at in the TFTP server. This would simply be the directory where you downloaded the firmware file for your FortiGate. In this case, I downloaded it in my downloads folder. So I can simply point it to my downloads folder so that when the firewall connect to my PC as a TFTP server, you can grab this file and then flash it to the firewall so I can gain my access back. So in this case, we also going to be required to enter the file name inside the 48 console so that we can let the firewall know which file to try to read. So what I like to do is I like to come here and just rename it to a more simpler name so that I don't have to write this whole string. So I'm just going to call this 641, which is the firmware version I downloaded. This way I can just simply have this symbol name and it's going to be easier to write. So I'm using my console cable to connect to the firewall. I showed you how to do this in the console connectivity video. It's on my introduction to 40 Git course and I also have it for free on my YouTube channel. So just look it up in the Elastic Course YouTube channel and we're going to connect to the firewall also using the Ethernet so we can push the firmware file. So now we're going to change it to Ethernet and as you notice this is using my 172.20.0.20 which is the DHCP IP I got from the firewall before we broke it. So right now we need to change this IP address statically so that we can connect properly to the firewall. So the way we change this, we have to go into the network and connectivity center and change the adapter option. And here I have my different interfaces, my Wi-Fi, my Bluetooth, my VMware virtual interfaces, and I have my Ethernet. So let's open this one up and we can see in here the IBV4 configuration. So just click properties. And here you will see that this is set to DHCP. That's why there is nothing in here. We have to statically assign this so that we can connect to the firewall properly and flash the firmware. So we're going to change it to static and the IP address on the firewall will always be 192.168.1.99. This is a slash 24 network. So since this is the firewall IP, I can choose any other IP in the same network so that I can connect to it using the TFTP protocol. So I can choose any IP from 192.168.1.1 up until the 254 with the exception to .99 this will be the firewall IP. So let me change this and put myself to 100 or maybe put it to 150. So now my IP address on this PC will be 192.168.1.150 slash 24. The firewall will be 192.168.1.99. I will be connected physically to the firewall so that I can flash the firmware properly. Now, in the default gateway, we don't really need to do anything in here. You may ask why, because we are on the same network. The firewall is .99 and I am .150 on the same network. There is no routing in here. It's just going to RB out and ask who has this IP. And then you'll be able to communicate. We don't really need a default gateway because we are not leaving the network. So now we have the static IP. I just want to click OK. Now everything is all set. Now we just need to wait for the firewall to reboot one more time or we can simply unblock the power cord and get back to the menu. Now once you see this message, please wait for OS to boot or press any key to display the configuration menu. Just make sure you press any key and this will open up this menu. This will allow you to configure the TFTP server or flash firmware or format your boot drive. Now the first thing I personally like to do is to format the boot device since my device is fully broken right now, I like to start on a fresh boot drive so that I don't have to worry about any old files. So I just put the letter F and it's going to ask me, do you really want to erase the boot device? So I want to say yes. And now this formatted my boot device, which is already broken. Now the option we want to use is G 
G, which is the one that we use to push the firmware to the device. So I'm just going to write G. Now in here, it's going to ask you to connect the TFTP server to Ethernet WAN 1. So this will be the board that I will connect my Ethernet cable from my PC to the firewall. In some other devices, this will be the management board. But since my firewall doesn't have a managed board, it's asking me to connect to WAN 1. And now it's asking me what is the TFTP server address. Remember, the TFTP server address will be your desktop where you are pushing the firmware from. And we are running this using the TFTP server application TFTP D64. So I assigned my static IP address earlier, which is 192.168.1.150. Now the local address will be the firewall IP address which is 192.168.1.99. This will always be the 40 gate side IP. Now in here you will see it's asking me for the firmware image file. And that's why I renamed my firmware file earlier to 641.out so that I don't have to write the full file name in this menu. So I just want to put the file name 641.out. Once I do this, I click enter. It's going to try to connect the TFTP server. So let's switch the screen to here. And we have the directory selected. The server interface will change automatically. And once the firewall is able to communicate, you will see in here the file is being transferred to the device. It's kind of a slower process because the TFTP protocol is kind of slow, but it gets the job done in the end. Once the firmware has been pushed, it's going to check the checksum and make sure the device firmware is the correct version. And once this has happened, it's going to ask you, do you want to set this as the default or backup or just one time? We want to choose this to be the default firmware. So I'm going to choose D. And now it's going to ask me that this will relay out the boot device. So I just want to say Y. And shortly after, now I see the login screen again, which is very promising. So I want to log in like I normally do with the admin and blank password. And it's forcing me to change the password for the first use. And now I have access back to the device. So now we fix the firewall by flashing the firmware file using the TFTB protocol. We run the command git sys status. This will show me the firmware version of my device and I see in here I'm running version 6.4.1 and I gain access back to the firewall. Now this was the simple way to format the firewall and restore the firmware version using TFTP protocol. In the next video I will show you how to restore the configuration file using two different methods so that you can get all your configuration back in the device after you fix the firmware portion. Thank you for watching.